What's going on everybody? RJ Ochoa here from SB Nation's bloggingtheboys.com. We hope all is well wherever you are. We hope you're happy, safe, healthy, and that you are managing to get over the Dallas Cowboys losing their season opener against the Los Angeles Rams. It's still so hard to believe how the Cowboys didn't at all attack Jared Goff. They let him have everything underneath. You look at what Jared Goff was able to accomplish and it really was nothing special, but somehow, someway, the Cowboys are 0-1 and staring up when it comes to the NFC East. A quick update on the NFC East standings as we sit here in Week 2. There is only one undefeated team in the NFL's most storied division. In the most 2020 thing of all time, the Washington football team is 1-0, while the Dallas Cowboys, Philadelphia Eagles, and the New York Giants with new offensive coordinator Jason Garrett are all 0-1. It is a sight to behold. It is very weird, and if the Cowboys don't want to fall to 0-2, they will have to get through the Atlanta Falcons on Sunday, their first home game of the season. The Falcons also 0-1, having lost in Week 1 to the Seattle Seahawks, who the Cowboys will visit in Week 3, all things considered. So lots going on as the Cowboys get ready for their second game of the season, and a part of what they're doing is putting together their roster, because Unfortunately, the Cowboys suffered a lot of injuries on the road in L.A. Now, the Cowboys actually started the season with a couple of notable players on injured reserve. Vento Bryan is on IR, starting right tackle Lyle Collins is on injured reserve, and Sean Lee, of course, is on injured reserve. Now, here's the thing when it comes to IR in 2020. We all know that NFL teams can put an unlimited number of players on injured reserve, but normally there is a restriction in terms of how many players that each team can bring back. That is not the case here in 2020. Due to COVID-19 protocols, NFL teams can bring back an unlimited number of players from injured reserve. The only stipulation is they have to be there for three weeks. So as an example, then tell Bryant, Lyle Collins, Sean Lee, because they were on injured reserve when the season began, they are eligible to return to the 53-man roster come week four. The Cowboys placed three players on injured reserve on Tuesday. Of course, uh, everybody was really bummed to hear that Blake Jarwin starting tie in for the Cowboys tore his ACL. He is lost for the season. The Cowboys also placed starting linebacker Leighton Vanderish on injured reserve, who suffered a broken clavicle. He is expected to miss six to eight weeks, which should take the Cowboys all the way up to their bye week. And those are some tough games the Cowboys are going to have to play without him. They're going to have to rely on Jalen Smith while Leighton Vanderish is out to carry the linebacking group as a whole. And he did not have his best game against the Rams, so fingers crossed in that department. Of course, the Cowboys also placed Cam Irving on injured reserve. And now the Cowboys' depth at tackle is really going to be tested because the Cowboys are without Lyle Collins. They're without Cam Irving. They started Terrence Steele, an undrafted free agent out of Texas Tech, at right tackle in the season opener, who all things considered really played well. The Rams really picked on him near the end. We talked about that in our game recap video, but they've got Terrence Steele, they've got Brandon Knight, and they have a couple of new players. The Cowboys signed Alex Light off of the Arizona Cardinals practice squad on Tuesday. Alex Light, an undrafted free agent who joined the Green Bay Packers in 2018, and if those light bulbs in your head went off, it's because you are correct. Mike McCarthy was obviously the head coach of the Green Bay Packers for a part of the 2018 season before he was fired after, ironically, a loss to the Arizona Cardinals. So the Cowboys have a new offensive tackle in town. The Cowboys have also signed the linebacker Rashad Smith from the practice squad of the Chicago Bears, which gives them some depth there. The Cowboys did not promote linebacker Francis Bernard from their own practice squad. However, they are protecting him. As the Dallas Morning News' Michael Gelkin notes, this is the only way the Cowboys would be able to have both Rashad Smith and Francis Bernard a part of their team. So maybe we will see Francis Bernard promoted next week. But that is only two players that were promoted to the 53-man roster as far as outside additions are concerned. We know that there were three spots because the Cowboys placed Jarwin, Van Der Esch, and Irving all on injured reserve. Where did that third spot come from? Well, the Cowboys promoted Brandon Carr to the 53-man roster. We all knew that the Cowboys kind of surprised a lot of people when they brought in Brandon Carr after a couple of years with the Baltimore Ravens. And Brandon Carr now has a couple of weeks under his belt as a new member of the Dallas Cowboys. And if he were to play this Sunday against the Falcons, it would be kind of poetic if you think about it. Because Brandon Carr's last game with the Cowboys was a divisional round loss to Mike McCarthy's Green Bay Packers. Had the Cowboys won that game, they would have hosted the Atlanta Falcons in the NFC Championship game, which would have taken place at AT&T Stadium. So, had the Cowboys won that game, Brandon Carr's next game would have been against the Falcons at AT&T Stadium. It is possible that his first game with the Cowboys in his return is against the Falcons at AT&T Stadium. Sometimes things work out that way. So the Cowboys now have three new players on their 53-man roster that they did not have last week. They did not, as of now, make an addition in the tight end department because the Cowboys 
don't have Blake Jarwin, a lot of people thought maybe they would go out and add an outside free agent, a player like Delaney Walker, or whoever the case may be, but it seems like the Cowboys are comfortable, at least, with what Dalton Schultz, Blake Bell, and Sean McKeon offer them. Maybe the Cowboys would just decide to throw it all of their receivers and running backs instead of tight ends, but that remains to be seen. The Cowboys, of course, play the Atlanta Falcons on Sunday at noon Central Time. It is a big game because you're going to hear all week long all the stats and all the statistics and all the records of teams that started off 0-2. Of course, it was the 1993 Dallas Cowboys that were the first team in NFL history to start off 0-2 and eventually win the Super Bowl, but we don't want to put that, uh, that particular test to the limit here in 2020. So hopefully the Cowboys get that win. We'll have you covered as the week progresses for information concerning the game, matchups we're looking forward to, who we think is ultimately going to win, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Make sure you also check out blogontheboys.com as well as the official Blog on the Boys YouTube channel. Make sure you check out the Blog on the Boys podcast network. We are available on all major podcast platforms. Platforms. And do us a favor, make sure you have the absolute best day of all time. You know why? Because you deserve it. We'll see you next time.